Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my co-host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, introduce today's guest, or even better yet, let's just see what we're going to be talking about today. What's happening, everyone? So at the time of recording, uh, it's currently half time on the Ghana Uruguay match in the World Cup. And uh, it's on my on my right hand screen. Sean's on my left, and I thought, you know what? We're late to the party here. We're too late to do anything about the World Cup for our own marketing. Like we couldn't do a sweepstakes, for example, to pick on on that. Or there's there's uh, Christmas coming up, or there's Valentine's Day. There's all kinds of things throughout any given point in every year, and sometimes it's not every year, like the World Cup. But which one should we pick on and do something for in terms of like a, a sale or? A special marketing campaign for our company. So, I thought mid mid World Cup, let's um let's see what Sean thinks, and uh, I'll pick his ideas apart. That'll be fun. Okay, well, I don't know if you're going to pick because it's been really successful. Some of the stuff I've done in the past, uh, I haven't done much for the World Cup, but in, in the past, I know for you know Super Bowls, um, you know the winner of the Super Bowl, I will actually do a specific target to people in that state and city, um, and put that in the subject line of. You know, for example, Kansas Chiefs, great Super Bowl win yesterday. And it gets a lot. But with the World Cup going on right now, there's a lot of different things you can do. One, you can try and see what teams people cheer for. Um, you can also see probably on their LinkedIn, there's different ways to find out where people are originally from. And you can, you know, I, I was on a meeting yesterday and the person had the flag in the background. So that's, first of all, it's an icebreaker um, to see where they're, what they're cheering for. And then that's the start of your conversation. So, you know, you bring that up be like, Oh, great game by Ghana yesterday or great game by England. Um, you know, if you're going to target the UK, you probably don't want to be targeting, I think it was Germany yesterday that lost, but, um, right now, but you want to, you want to target the ones that are winning. Um, you know, some other, you know, great strategies that I've, I've used in the past is, you know, you come and you say, for example, the UK is playing, let's just say England was playing Canada in the world cup. Unfortunately, Canada's out. You say something like, listen, Ollie, you know, if England wins, you're going to get me that purchase order by Friday. You know, if Canada wins, I'm going to give you 5% off that purchase order or that, that upcoming deal. So you can use different things strategically um, in the World Cup or in any sporting event that's going on um, that puts someone, the prospect in a better mood. So make sure they're winning. Um, but there's different things you can definitely do to get that um to get that you to get you closer to that sale or even if it's marketing get you closer to that lead in that pipeline so you were thinking of it as a deal closing mechanism you're saying like by end of week or by end of tournament or end of month whatever it may be you're using that as a are you in do you want to do this and then if, if they take it they take it yeah but you can also do as a prospecting tool like you know for example you England say they win, they win their match yesterday. You can go on LinkedIn and do some sort of messages to all these people in the UK or go through your email list, your MailChimp list or HubSpot list, whatever you have. Look for anyone in the UK and build out a, build out a specific email to them because people are more likely to reply to something that kind of knows your resume. So even though I didn't do much research, I just looked to see who's from the UK in my email list. It does look like you actually did something instead of spraying and praying. I'm going to tell you something that we were going to do, and then I was told otherwise. So thanks, Stacey, on our team for saving me uh, some embarrassment here. I wanted to do um, like a, a guess how far Serbia will get in the tournament. So we have a, a big part of the team is from Serbia. So I thought, let's pick them. And we were going to do something for Canada, but um, Serbia are probably a bit more of a stronger team. So yeah. it, that's a bit better of a, of a country to pick on. And the, the, the idea was going to be, pick how far Serbia go in the tournament. So it could be they win, they get to the final and they lose, the semifinals, quarterfinals, round of 16, or they don't get out of the group stages. So you've got six options. Not straightforward, and it really does depend on how they do. They might actually go quite far. They maybe, maybe they won't. We don't know yet. I was going to have everyone pick which one they thought, and the, those that got it right got like a free A, B, and C or X amount of discount. We couldn't actually do that. In, uh, in certain countries, you can't do that as, as my cat jumps in uh, onto my shot here. Um, that, that's called a sweepstakes and you have to have certain countries are, are or are not involved. So we couldn't have done that. So that, that's one thing to keep in mind, actually. There are sometimes laws and things you got to be aware of. But, you know, I've done these things before and even I, I didn't even know about that. So you can't always be as kind of clever as you want to be. But I'm thinking ahead of, um, so we have the Christmas uh, holidays coming up. I know that we've got an advent campaign coming up so why don't you tell us about that 
Yes, the advent calendar. Actually, it's, it launched. It launched. Uh, I think it launched uh, yesterday, I believe. So what we do for that is uh, every day for the month, there's a different deal that goes out. Um, it could be two for one seats. It could be email validation. It could be every you know every day you get something else, and you just have to message our CSM team and say, yeah, I want to take advantage of that deal, that deal, that deal. So we actually come out with I think it was twenty four deals over the next twenty four days before Christmas. Um, and it, it, it's good because a, you know, a lot of people can take advantage of they've leftover budget can take care, take advantage of all the different things that we are offering from, um, from subscriptions to data, to email verification, to you name it. Um, it's all in there. So, uh, there's things like black Friday, cyber Monday recently gone by, you have Valentine's, you have Easter, you have, um, all of those kind of, um, time of year types of things. How how much is too much? I think it depends on what you're selling. If you sell something worth quite a lot, that comes off a little bit corny, maybe. Yeah. But if you're selling something lower price, I think that's it. Almost becomes like e-commerce marketing. You're kind of saying, yeah, we've got the Black Friday sale. Yeah, we've got the Valentine sale. Yeah, we've got the end of summer deal, whatever it is, and that's fine. But yeah. it's not so much in a bigger company, is it? I think it's more of a small startup to small. Um, it works. I don't think when you're a medium-sized company and then you start having, you know, you've raised money, you have investors, you have a board of directors, that a board, you know, that's where it starts to get a little fishy because you have RV margins, fixed cost, variable costs, et cetera. But when you're a startup or you're not small, I would say almost, you know, under a few million in revenue, I think it's a good idea to generate new business. Um, I personally do. If you're doing a little more than that, I don't think it's good because then what you do is you have all these customers that are, are not discounted, be like, well, I'm going to cancel today i'm going to sign up again tomorrow and get the better pricing um and then it's like okay well you this is only for new customers well then it's like i don't know you have this this fan base that customer base that is kind of part of your community now you're saying well because you signed up in october you're not getting the deal but if you waited till december you would have got 20 percent off so i think it's all depends on um your target market but if you're in that s when you're smb and you're in that s that small business to start up I think it's a good idea to generate new business, new growth, um, new word of mouth marketing, et cetera. Um, but not, not so good at the, the larger your company is. Okay. So I want to put you on the spotlight where we've been going for about five, 10 minutes. Um, I want to see what you've got. We're going to plan our Valentine's day deal or campaign for next year on the spot. What are you thinking? Valentine's day. You know, you, uh, I love you, that you're struggling. You, no, no. I, I mean, yeah, you can do something interesting. You can do something for Valentine's Day. You can you can offer. I mean, then it's kind of getting the gender. But you can say any any female person that wants uh, wants auto clothes, for example, will get a certain discount. Um, so you can do something like that for Valentine's Day. Um, you can do some sort of you know discount, like I think uh, what day is Valentine's Day? Is it F- February fourteenth? Fourteenth. I'll find out what so day. You can, give a, you can give a fourteen percent discount. There you go. You can do something like that. Okay, It's um, on a Tuesday, so it's not that romantic, but okay. I mean, it depends who you are. Tuesdays can still be romantic, Ollie, okay? So, um, it depends if you're not you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, you can, you can do like a 14% discount. You can do something, um, you know, special for, you know, women entrepreneurs, women business leaders, um, different things you can do. Um, I mean, I don't really get too creative because I find the more creative you get, the more complex it is. And, and if you have all the systems and processes in place, doing specific things that not really like your two for one, your 14%, it's a lot tougher to do um, because you're creating different packages and accounting. And we were, uh, unfortunately, did that a lot early on um, in auto close. And, and now we have, you know, for probably eight different packages we offer, we have about 50 different packages in our accounting software that kind of, you know, almost all do the same thing. So... 14% off um, if you sign up on Tuesday, the Valentine's Day. How about that? Okay. I like that one. Um, 14's not like pulling me too bad, but I, I get why you picked that. I'd go for, maybe we do both. Well, you tell me. I think um, we have G2 and that time of year, uh, we always have a review budget. So we can say, um, review us on G2 if you're a customer and that always gives you a 25 buck Amazon voucher. So that's nearly always worth doing. Yeah. It's just kind of a pain in the butt to actually keep reminding people, Hey, can you do this? Can yeah. you do this? Cause they, they kind of don't always want to do it. But if we were then to say as well, cause we're not losing cash for this, we're not saying we'll give you 
14 bucks or a month free or something get the amazon voucher and also you get 14 percent off next month because it's monthly so you can do this month we didn't lose 25 bucks and we got 14 percent off 14 percent off of let's say a hundred dollars 14 dollars big deal depends on how many customers do it but i think that that's a nice little um or maybe it's a heavy discount on all upsells in that month or something like that, tying it in both of them at the same time. I mean, here's another idea. You can just give a $14, like an actual you know, dollar bill that says $14 towards auto close, and you can use it for anything in auto close. You can use that for email verification. You can use it for a monthly subscription. You can use it for an annual subscription. You can use it for whatever you want. It's $14 for Valentine's Day. Okay. So you're thinking of mailing that to people or, or like a, PDFing it. Absolutely not, because it would probably cost you more than $14 just to mail yeah, it. So I was going to say. <laughs> it would be a PDF in an email. Open up your gift. There's $14 cash value. Use it towards anything on the site, systems, anything. Little QR code with your unique reference or something like that. It, with like probably you probably need like a coupon code or promo code because that's the easiest way to actually input it. And then you put that into your, your cart on your website. Boom, $14 off anything you need. I like it. Okay. Um, so we're going to flip um, onto something a little bit different and then uh, I think we can wrap. Have you, what um, sales have you seen or, or campaigns have you seen, particularly, I don't mean like, you know, household stores and that kind of stuff. That's totally different. But in, in our type of world, what have you seen that's, that's caught your eye? Any good Black Friday deals or do people have a, a like end of year sale that normally is actually appealing? I feel like a lot of people just run these things randomly and, you know, it's kind of like the done thing. It's Oh yeah, Valentine's Day. We'll put out a Valentine's Day blog, and that's kind of it. But what ones have you seen that have been worth it? So for me, it's it, you know I, I don't really buy many software tools, etc. On Black Friday, I more will buy stuff for I need around the house, furniture, towels, stuff like that. That might be you know car seats, for example. That's what I, one thing I found for you know my new my 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 daughter. Um, but for online, I find softwares are something where when you you want it, you need, you want it right now. So I'm not going to wait till Black Friday to say, oh, I'm going to get $10 off this tool. No, if I'm in prospecting mode, I want that prospecting mode that second. So I'm going to buy it and spend the extra five, ten dollars because you're waiting that extra three weeks to save the extra $10, which could lead to you know four or five different deals. Um, so for me, softwares, technologies, I don't really take advantage of any Black Friday deals just simply because for me, it's, uh, I don't want to wait. But you know, for more of the consumer side, we're I'm looking for something and it's like, you know what, let's just wait a few weeks. And I've done that this year for a lot. Let's just wait a few weeks and see what the Black Friday sale they, they come out with. Um, and, and typically, to be honest, people have gone smarter now. They don't give you the Black Friday on Black Friday. They give you the Black Friday thing a month before to take advantage. So you actually sign up with them or buy from them before their competitors all put their Black Friday deals out. So um, I more use it for consumer than I do, uh, than I do for business to business. Funny you say that. I've, I've got a bit of, of a prediction, if I can get my words out. I'll, I want to know what you think of this. I have this big skepticism that Black Friday deals are not actually deals. They've already bumped the price, and then it comes down to roughly what it was. And then you think, oh, my God, 80% off. But it's not actually that cheap. It's kind of what I thought it would be anyway. I feel like that's really common. Maybe not quite as dramatic as I just said, but I haven't seen that happen in B2B. I wonder if that will. You couldn't get away with it being... Like crazy. Like imagine Salesforce, say it's, I don't know what Salesforce costs, say 10K. It couldn't go to like 32 and then come down to eight. That would be ridiculous. Everyone would say, what the hell are you doing? But for for like lower price things, maybe individual user level stuff, I can see now's a good time to raise our pricing by 20% if we were going to do that. Because Black Friday deals are going to be roughly what they were before, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, No one's going to notice it as much. And, and for a lot of people, I mean, you could be strategic as well. I mean, a lot of people, if you're planning a Black Friday deal and you're going to off twenty percent or off, well, and you, you know, and you're planning on raising your price, a lot of a lot of software companies are raising with inflation, raising their pricing. You know, we went in auto close from forty nine ninety nine about a year ago to sixty nine ninety nine, and we can probably charge even more. So strategically, next year, if we want to do a big Black Friday thing, I might move our pricing in you know February to seventy nine ninety nine, and then offer twenty percent off, and you're still getting the exact same price that you're getting this year. So there's. There's different things you have to do. And, and the one thing, you know, people don't do is they just, you can't just increase or decrease price. You got to, you know, look at what, what are your margins? What are your fixed costs? What's your gross margin? Because first off, you know, 
it might not be affecting you right now, but you know, in a year or two, three years, five years, when you might be looking to get acquired and they go, okay, your gross margin. Well, you, they start looking like you're not making much money off all these sales because you're discounting too much. It's not an attractive to investors. So if your end goal is always to sell your company, which most people do want to, um, these numbers might not affect you early on, but they will affect you down the road when you're actually looking for that acquisition. But then at that very early stage where you got to be scrappy, users on the books, cash coming in, all counts the same. Yeah. You, I mean, you want to show that growth, but you also want to show that margin, right? There's two different things you got you to gotta look at there. So in conclusion, do sales and Black Friday deals and things like that, but you don't buy them, but do them is, is what I got from you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, but as I said, not everyone's like me. You know, I, as I say, I'm one of those yeah. people, when I want it, I don't hem and haw. I go and get it, right? Um, there's a lot of people that say, you know, they're willing to, you know, sit back and wait three weeks to save $5 where I'm like, that $5 I can make into $15 in that three weeks I'm waiting. Yeah, I think it depends a lot on um, like timings of the year for if it's business stuff, then, yeah. uh, you know, budget's being used up by a certain month. Well, you know, Pick just before that, whatever the event is. It could be the World Cup, it could be the Olympics, could be in the spring, or who knows what. It's kind of picking in the buying cycle if there is one for you. But um, this is good fun. Uh, I, th- I figured I'll put you on the spot. I never prep you, and um, so far I haven't really tripped you up. I keep trying. Good. Well, that was a lot, that was a lot of fun, and, and thanks for uh, putting that together, Ollie. And also, thank you for everybody that listened to this episode today. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever in the world you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the next show. We do have some great guests coming on um, and uh, we'll we'll, we'll get in touch with you guys shortly and and show you those, uh, those guests. Thank you again and see you soon.